Hello gamers, today I'm going to be trying to do a sub-60 run with no chins. Uh, it's pretty easy to get a sub-55 with this setup for me currently, but I wanted to have a good example for people trying to get into speeds and trying to get that sub-60, which is a really fantastic milestone. Um, this is going to be the full run from start to finish. I'm going to be commenting on a lot of the, a lot of the wave solves and a lot of the uh, specific things I'm doing whenever i am got a free moment. Of course, my brain might freeze up a little bit when flicking and all that, but you get the drift. Uh, this is going to be a resource for the Inferno Speeds Discord, which will be in the comments section if you're interested in joining. A whole lot of people in there, nearly a thousand people at the, at the uh, time of this recording. And it is, well, it's just really popping off. A lot of people streaming stuff, a lot of people sharing achievements and getting new PBs. Really cool to see. So, here goes nothing. Should be hopefully a, hopefully nearer to 60. I did one of these the other day. And it was closer to 55 because I wasn't really able to pace myself to go slowly. I know that sounds weird, but once you're able to go fast, it's hard to slow down. Um, might ramble a fair amount, but the idea here will be to showcase good procedure, uh, try and have really consistent and safe solves, and still like you know maintain good tick speeds without using any sort of crazy things like phantom barrages or pillar off ticks or things like that. So there'll be a couple of cool things in here, but there should be nothing in here that's specifically, you know, too hard to too hard to emulate if you're half decent at Inferno. So for example, in a really good speedrun, I drew I dragged that back closer by going over there. In this one, I'm just gonna stand here and then I'm gonna come across, wait a second, and go stuff like this. Just to slow myself down a little bit, make it look a little bit more realistic in comparison to uh, someone who's doing a little bit of a slower run. I was also told the other day that I should probably um, I should probably aim to do less switches per tick since that's not really for everyone. I've got fairly fast clicks, so we'll try and, for example, we'll do stuff like this where we don't we don't Tebow the blob in this scenario because we're just trying to go for consistency. None of those crazy flicks. I don't really know how to slow myself down that much, because it's going to look and feel weird, and I want it to look and feel authentic, for the most part. But we'll see how it goes. One thing I want to emphasize a lot in this run is Barrage Procedure and more specifically how Barrage Procedure really matters in terms of tanking. So maybe I'll send a Tebow here but I'll try and lose a couple of ticks as I do it for example. The really big tip for sub-60 is just always attack something. Always, always attack something. And uh, of course, do it while potted with rigor. As you can see from that barrage there, you may notice that as I'm doing the barrage, you can actually see here very clearly, if I switch to my gear, I'll switch back into my armadillo before I do anything else. And that gives me the maximum defense for the attack that's coming from the mini bloblets. This is a very not commonly done thing that helps a lot. And when you're starting out doing speeds, it's not something you really think about, but it does matter a huge amount. Since those bloblets, they stack up a lot of damage and you can only pray against one in some circumstances. Especially when you're running out to meet things. I'll try and talk about some of the other basic things for sub-60s down the road, but... main thing is, good procedure, always attacking, rigor on, and uh, barrage procedure. In this circumstance, you see that I only get one nibbler, and in fact I barely, uh, I barely even damage it. But what I do is I switch the blowpipe immediately. 
This is another really good thing to be doing. You don't want to be uh, sitting around trying to barrage stuff repeatedly. Bloodpipe is incredibly good DPS. So you should always try and switch to it after one barrage. The same is true for mini blobs. Generally. One barrage, deal with the wave. It's a really good rule of thumb. You'll also notice that I'm not really going to be flicking a whole lot, really. Got that nibbler over there. What we're going to do here is switch to Kodai and just get a long range barrage off and then try and follow it up with a blood bite in case it doesn't die, just like that. Let's just get it a bit quicker. By using the blob to safe spot the melee here, we can send out a pretty nice barrage, which hits everything on its southwest tile. There's not going to be a whole lot of commentary for these low waves, I don't think, just very minor things to note. See how that melee stacking really helps there. You can do this with a lot of NPCs, with Chins especially, but you can do it with Barrage just the same. <clears throat> and again, I'm not going to be flicking a whole lot here. As long as I'm flicking um, Rigor as much as I can. I will generally have enough prayer for the entire run, quite happily. Alright, we're going to do a little melee blob flick here. Not the best one ever. With that blob flick, you manage to block about 75% of the blob's damage, but you can, of course, be hit from the 75, uh, the 25% chance. So, if you get unlucky, you're going to be damaged a fair amount. One of the things I like to do is I have I have uh, some very weird marked tiles. This one here probably shouldn't even exist, but it is there. This one's a really useful one, allows you to attack stuff on this side of the pillar, especially bats that spawn. This is a natural bat safe spot like it would be for this tile here, from bats over here. Oh, looks like I missed. One thing I do a lot is I'll start very close to the middle of the room. Reason being, it allows me to start attacking stuff quicker. One barrage, start killing stuff. Now no one likes bats, so we're going to go and spec them down here. Always worth burning a blowpipe spec if you feel HP to kill off bats like that. It's a good run energy save, it's a good HP filler. No point sitting on spec at all. Thank you. 
My starting position for later waves is going to change a fair amount, but up until majors it doesn't really uh, change too much. Gonna draw that nibbler in, or that uh, blob in. Barrage procedure again back into Armadil. No damage taken. It's always very nice. And once again, sticking to that one barrage and then solve the wave rule. This, this will stay there for another 10 seconds. Plenty of time to deal with it. Even if it goes to pillar, I'm not fussed. In fact, we'll deal with that nibble at the end of the wave. More concerned about having a quick salt here. Now we know it remembers. Well, we've got to remember it's over there. The kill. You would deal with that slightly differently in a faster run, but. Don't have chins! One tick alternating always works for situations like this. Very good skill to have and an even better skill to be able to pull it on command. Gonna burn a spec to stay high HP. Very nice. Good barrage procedure, get a 12, no big D. Okay, well, we can probably kill the Nibbus here. And get away from that melee. Yep, just about. Since they were going for my North Pillar in that circumstance, I wanted to take him out a little bit quicker. Same thing again, just come over here. We're gonna spec that back when it comes a bit closer. I really don't like that, never lucky. Take out the nibble as well. And again, no need to use Trins or Tilo or anything here, just pure blood pipe, run and hit. Stam's getting a bit low, I can afford to use three doses, one, one for Zuck is absolutely plenty. So we're gonna sit that. Kill the bat immediately, fuck bats, we don't like bats at all. We can use this bat to move over to the ranger, which is very nice. Next wave is a blob, gotta be a bit careful, we're gonna start here instead, just next to the pillar. Then we can move back. In fact, that blob is stuck, I don't need to do anything. Rather convenient. And he's still stuck. A 
bit late there on the barrage here. Taking a bit of damage for it. No biggie. Don't want to aggro the ranger, just going to send the barrage that way using only a Kodai switch. A cult's nice to have on as well. Kodai on its own would be fine as well. Or you could just send a barrage, like, even without them. They plus have, of course, practically no defense, so you can get away with it. In later waves, of course, I'll be barraging from Armadil, with essentially no repercussion. Same goes for using Augury in this scenario. It's fine, you can do it, but it really doesn't matter. Should have already started from this tile again, so we'll do that now. In fact, we'll start back here. We, may, we might want to dodge around to the north side. Yeah, we'll do that. Just to get away from that blob. Burst down the bat. Uh, in fact, what we can do here is, if you want to play it nice and safe, just come around, take him out here. Bring that ranger even closer. Less flicking to do. Less chance of mistakes. This is a really nice position for the melee. You can drag him back like this. And that is, of course, a corner trap on the edge of that pillar. Just gonna go and kill him. And we'll just alternate the entire thing here. You can set up a two tick if you like, but this is obviously simpler. I know where the blob attacked. Switch to mage here. Come round and deal with the melee. Missed the hit there, but that's fine. It's only one hit. And we're lucky. Right, Ranger and uh, two minutes, we can come up a little bit. And this lets us get a bit closer to that Ranger. And we can now use the uh, Ranger as a pillar. I can either attack him like this, or I can bring him around a bit, and I can use the Ranger as the side of that pillar once again. And we can stay here, which is a nice little trick. I can also drag that other melee round like this, get him a bit here, get, uh, get him in here a little bit quicker. Not that useful for sub-60s and should have gone a bit earlier since he dug, but again, a nice little trick. Double ranger, we can start in the middle, it's only a ranger after all, let's pray range. Alright, I want to draw this guy closer, and these guys really don't do a lot of damage, so I'm just going to come and stand here. The melees really don't hurt at all, if they ever hit you. And now we can attack him immediately. Not very really advised to do that against a Major, but perfectly fine when doing it against a Ranger. I'm going to finish these guys with Blowpipe. You could mage them if you wanted to, if you got quick switches, but it really makes no difference. Time difference to kill is essentially the same here. And we're on to Majors. Once again, good procedure. Barrage once, start attacking. If there's stuff left over, I can deal with it. For uh, faster speed runs, you would end up walking towards it, so the travel time for your arrow is less. And you therefore gain a tick or two from the time it takes to die, like this. I'm not going to be doing this for this run though, just showing it as an example of what you should be doing. If you want to go for faster times. Whenever there's bats in a major, you can usually end up killing them, praying mage. Flick the range on the off ticks if you like, they do hurt a bit. Not the biggest concern though.
Okay, bit of an awkward position with the uh, bats there. I'm just gonna kill him. A lot of people will uh, tell you to kill that major first all the time. You're not entirely wrong, but sometimes the easier solution is the better solution. And in this case, killing bats is perfectly fine. These guys, when they get spawned there, they're gonna be stuck, so we can just take them out in a second. Blow pipe spec, get some HP back. Well, lovely. Gonna burn another stand those. Those, bat kinda, those bats kinda drained us. Good barrage procedure. Gonna finish with blowpipe. I could have barraged them for a bit more HP. Probably should have done, but it's no big deal. You can always send a blood barrage at the start of a wave like so. Gonna follow that up since he's the only one alive. Now we can attack the major. That Tebow, that Tebow move there is nice to do on uh, sub-60 runs. You can get away with it pretty easily. If you're flicking something and you really have no brain power to, to flick your weapons, you can always just Tebow the blob. Fairly weak to the Tebow, or high mage level, so fairly, uh, fairly good damage on it, generally. Kill the bats, back on the major. Never lucky. Never lucky. Shouldn't finish him with Tebow. Right, we could burn another Stamdos. I'm not too fast right now. I may have started that uh, in range free. Just emulating sub 60 mistakes. Once we start getting into rangers and majors, I'll try and comment a little bit more on the actual spawns and why I'm solving them the way I am. I am not praying correctly. I won't die from that, but it might hurt. Mm. Need to really uh, remember that. So, again, a lot of people tell you, no, don't kill the melee, try and kill the mage first, it's worth flicking it and stuff doesn't matter for sub-60 in the slightest. You can kill almost everything except the Major and still get away with it, and the run will be a decent time. One thing to note is you can always switch your quick prayers to uh, Mage and Rigor instead of what I'm doing, which is just keeping it on range and Mage. It's more of a personal preference for me. Not many people do it, but if you want to, you can. Alright, we're gonna come over here and say spot the melee. 
while you can kill the melee first, it doesn't mean you always should. And in this case, we uh, all we have to do is come around the side of the pillar, so it's a nice simple solve. Again, I'm barely ever touching my main pro. I'll only ever really flick rigor for this. And even then it's not a lot. Gonna barrage for a bit of HP here. Would be nice to get to 99 again. Feeling a bit more safe. There we go. And back down from the potion. <clears throat> we can preemptively move out here. This does two things. Firstly, it puts me in a position to attack the bats. Secondarily, it puts me in a position where if the melee digs, I can move here, and he will be safe spotted. I can demonstrate this because apparently the mage is not dying. You can do this as if this was an NPC as well. It's a very cool trick. So we can come and stand here, for example. And now he's in a pillar safe spot position. Very nice trick indeed. You can also do this, where you want to kill the bats off. You can uh, bring them round here. So I spelt them on the middle. We've got a blob here, so I'm going to try and duck around the pillar. There we go. Pray the pray range real quick for the blob. And kill the melee once again. Pillars at this point in time don't matter too much. I can happily lose one pillar and be fine. Uh, we have a range in a blob, uh, melee in a blob stack. So we're just going to do some two ticking. Since I don't really need the, um, well, if, if two ticking fails, then I can always switch to one tick alternating, which is perfectly fine, as far as a method goes. But two ticking gives you a bit more time to react and do stuff, so it's really nice. We have really, really uh, burning prayer again here, which is perfectly fine. Gonna come straight round. Right, we're gonna off tick this melee. We need to have a look at where it is. This looks fine, and melee prey. It may look scary, but it's well worth learning. It's not too hard to do. Now remember, failing is very much part of learning. It might be said a million times, but... You don't learn to do Inferno and do it quickly and solve correctly without dying a thousand times on wave 15. Alright, we can just stand still here. I'm gonna kill the kill the melee. As far as concern as far as I'm concerned, he's public enemy number one.
Might have just drunk that potion by accident. No big deal. We have plenty left. Right, major and two melees. Come out a little bit. That doesn't look very flickable to me. Now it might be. Okay, once again, just taking the time to move back a bit. If I don't think it's the right timing, I'm going to keep moving back. And if I can't get the right timing at all, I'm going to ditch it and run behind a pillar. With a bit of experience, a bit of practice, it's quite easy to do. And we're now onto the interesting waves. So let's move behind the pillar. This is now the Kelvino tile. Very nice tile for starting waves. Put on augury for every wave, and let's see what we get. Range prey immediately. And we're just going to start hitting him. Yes, I will kill the major first, but I'm going to take the time to go around the pillar correctly. And uh, me doing some DPS in this guy is completely fine. Still going to kill the Major first, but it's worth saving the time there to do something useful with your time. That's all that really matters. Confirming the kill. Go back around. We're going to start an Armadillo from now on as well. Not sure if I did the last wave. Same again. Very range. Tank the right. Get the time to go around. And we can continue. Only one member alive, not a big threat to the pillar, even if it goes down, it's quite late right now. Not a big deal. These first few Ranger Major waves you might start losing some HP, especially if you're not blood barraging the Ranger or Nibblers. That's fine though. Once you start to get back to a blob in the mix, you can begin barraging for HP. You can also Phantom Barrage, although I don't want to do any of that this run. Trying to keep it really simple. And worst case scenario, you can brew. That's a better spawn, nice and free. Just sit here and kill. We now have a blob in the mix, need to be aware of that. Okay. We're going to drag him a bit closer, wait for the attack. Get the blob hit, back to range. Cool. Lost a bit of time flicking there, but no problem. Main thing here was to drag the major for once. Yes, you could go and kill the ranger if you wanted to and, and uh, wait for it to pull up to the pillar. But the solution was really simple, just had to wait a little bit. You could have improved that by attacking the ranger. Back to our tile. Okay. Bit scared there. Wanted to isolate something. I saw there were two NPCs on that side. We're just gonna kill the ranger here. You could go and flick it on this side if you wanted to, but we don't have to. If it respawns, we can duck behind here again. Keeping things simple is often a better way to a, a good sub-60 time. Or your first sub-60. Than trying to optic stuff and dying to it, if you're not confident. Bat die, bat bad. Bats always die first. M1 
and we'll whip, whip, uh, we'll whip out the code right here. Get a long range shift in. And start right clicking to see if anything's left to die. Cool. Click the blob, get the major here. Kill the bat. And now we can alternate. Gonna bring the blob a bit closer. Can kill this bat behind him. Mental note the nibbler's on the pillar. In fact, that pillar's gonna die. I don't have to do anything about it. I might go for it if I kill this blob quick enough, but I don't really care. It's wave 55. And most importantly, my north pillar's still alive. Any pillar? Nope, no pillar and no nibbler. Saves us a bit of time here, I think. Cool. North pillar very easy to protect as long as you, uh... As long as you land the first barrage anyway. Gonna time the two tick. And we're gonna not prioritize that nibbler at all. In fact, there's two of them. Doesn't really matter. North Pillar's perfectly fine to play off of, especially when it's like practically full HP. So we can almost entirely ignore the other pillars for now. Lovely. Getting close to the 60s. We have a Ranger and a Major stack. Not going to do any weird optics on them. I'm just going to wait here, kill the melee. To make my life even easier, I'm going to pray that Mage and try and get that Nibbler from this spot here. Cool, nothing to worry about. Ah, that's really convenient. That actually stops the uh, Ranger from coming out, so I can just kill him. Things to be aware of, if it digs, it's going to reshuffle, so I have to be aware and just move. As long as I'm potted and I'm DPSing well, I should be able to kill the major before anything happens, though. Lovely. That melee is still stuck, it means I can't really go out there easily. Just gonna try and kill it normally. Lovely. In these waves here, I'd start brewing if I make big mistakes, since we can be comboed pretty quickly with a, an error or two. Right, that is, uh, pillar's gonna get eaten and we're not gonna worry about it at all. Just keep clicking major. Once that nibbler goes over, we'll think about going for it, but I kind of want to just kill this melee before I do anything else. Just getting to reset his, uh, dig time there. Fairly optional. There's two nibblers over there, so we can just... Click the Kodai, position it close to the Kodai as well, and they're dead. Very, very minor time save, or small help anyway. Good position here. Let's see if this will be on time. Looks like it. If you wanted to, if you're really struggling, you could have burned two blowpipe specs there to kill off the melee, just praying mage and flicking whenever you could. I opted for the slightly more interesting strat. Any NPC that spawns on this section here, you can drag them by standing there. 
and then you can continue to hit them after you uh, run back one or two tiles with a T-bow. One of the luxuries of having a bow, I might say. Gonna pray range. Um, just waiting for things to drag across. kill him because whenever the melee digs I can stand here and I can burn both those specs as aforementioned please die please die okay uh okay That is what's known as very unlucky. I sent two barrages there because the first one was so weak. Just wanted to see what I'd hit. Made sure to flip back into defensive gear the entire time. 79 HP for the wave start, perfectly fine. Gonna wait for those nibbles to group up. I made a small mistake there, not getting the Nibbler Barrage earlier. Again, all I was doing, I was timing the hit for the melee. It may seem like I'm fairly low restores, but we are into the 60s, so we've got plenty. Yeah, a bit of a weird wave. I'm going to stand over here to corner trap that blob. And I'm going to kill the bat, because I do not like bats. And then I'm going to move around, pre clicking the blob, and kill off the nibblers that are available here. Just carefully clicking. Now, my pillar HP is completely fine, but this is an example of how you would protect the pillar should you wish to. Now, I need to move back here to say spot that. Melee's gonna dig. And all we're gonna do is kill it. I'll burn blood pipe specs if I have to, and I can uh, do the melee blob flick as well. Play for the blob, and go. That blob might uh, send some minions around for me. There it is. That unfortunately does hit me. I'm actually 99 as well, so I don't need to, I don't need to blob Russia. Got a bit lucky on the hits there from the mini blob. Cool. 62 done. Officially the hardest wave for a speedrunner. On to the nice simple wave of 63. Drag in that major and closer. For some of those waves, I was uh, well. For, for, for a fair amount of these waves, I've been two ticking. And while I've been two ticking, I've been um, whenever whenever I'm off tick, which is actually really common because I'm just bad. 
I've been correcting my two tick. And the way you do this is by quite simply whenever you flick for the two ticks of the blob, you just flick for one tick instead of two ticks. And you'll correct it by default. Right, I've got infinite amounts of brew. Last few waves coming up. No harm in using a couple of doses. Have to repot anyway, so. Why bring brews if you don't use them? Nice free wave. Let's see if we can off tick this. Looks like it. Okay, mistimed a bit there at the end, but that's fine. Our pillar's taking some damage, but it's really, really, really high HP for the last few waves, so I don't have to worry about it at all. If anything, it's going to be good to get that lower down so I can use it to damage the NPCs later on. But we will kill it. Three restores left. Absolutely tons. Good supplies all around. Bit of a scary wave here, should be okay. Gonna send a blood barrage, just get that extra bit of HP. Oh, it's a free wave, lovely. Look, look at that. All we're gonna do is drag that major closer. Once again, our pillar's only got one nibbler on, it's completely fine. And that's the freest wave in history. If you're really concerned, you can, of course, move back here to kill the nibbler, but I know that's fine. Uh, next wave, if the Nibbler spawn and Major spawn permits, we will use the Pillar to damage the Major. Right, just the uh, Majors now, and I'm full HP, which means I don't need to barrage or do anything to that. And that's the single spawn that I cannot bring towards the pillar. So we're not going to. We're just going to let it die. Don't need it. Pray mage have fun. And of course we want to try and kill these at the same time. So simply to uh, prevent the healing of one than the other. No, the reviving rather. From this point onwards, I've got three restores, that's uh, really quite a lot. I can afford to camp prey almost entirely throughout the entire thing. I will flick occasionally here and there, mostly just pad it. Um, you can flick river if you like, you can one tick if you like, although I've seen some... I've seen my fair share of disaster one ticks at majors, double majors, so... Not too keen on that personally. Dead, and dead. On to the jads. We're going to be doing regular jad stuff, just tag and run under. If we have to, if, if it permits, then we'll blow pipe. If not, then we will Tebow the healers. Same for triples, uh, but of, of course, no running under. Also, won't be flicking Jad. So, if we get a big drop here, we can switch to our blow pipe. There we go, that'll do. And it does permit that we are able. Ooh, that's actually in melee range of Jad there. Gotta be a bit careful. I'm just trying to group them here. You don't actually have to pray melee for that, but it does help from the jad melees. Not the cleanest run under. You could happily cap mage pray here like this. The healer damage isn't very severe. As you can see, if you can flick it, then try and flick it. You can of course keep your Mage Prey on a really long time to make sure the hit goes through and then switch back to melee. For triples, I personally make it a mental note to practically never go to melee prey unless I'm really low, so... It's mostly personal preference and how your supplies are. No wait, 73. I'll be using Tebow here to tag the healers. Oh, no I won't, they're pretty much next to me. 
Bit of an unfortunate trap there, but no biggie. Gonna have one attacking us. Hit the is one of those cool things that again isn't really that necessary. It will help runs, but it will not uh, it will not make or break one. And we're gonna Tebow tag these, because we have don't chins. And we're going to go for a blowpipe spec on Shad. Worth it. Since I have full uh, spec anyway. No reason not to. I'll get it back by the time we have a, a spawn at Zuck. After this one here, because they've obviously got a fair amount of time, you can pray melee for a bit. It's a good habit to get into. It's more sort of... Um, more sort of advanced things as you start to progress below sub-60. But every little helps along the way. Nice insta trap there. And we can, of course, do this. So we're going into Zuck with a surplus of 2 plus brews. You can do this as well at the very end to get a bit more HP. Not that necessary, but it does help a little. And we're going to keep on rigor at the start here. It doesn't matter where you stand. Um, Zuck time! Hello, buddy. My preferred shield is east, so that's always nice. We've got two doses stam as well, so we can pop one now. Just for, well, why not? About the time Jad spawns, if you pop a stam dose, you'll usually be fine for the entire thing. Not that you really need stam for it, but it is nice. Oh, I've uh, missed a hit. Main thing on Zuck is just keep DPSing. I uh, should not have missed that hit there. I should have waited a tick. As soon as he attacks, obviously I can go to the safe spot. Actually, 80% spec. I kind of regret hitting the uh, Jad there. Should have done it on the first one if I wanted to. All right, we're going to go straight for the Ranger. Good spec. That's always nice to see. And we're going to be aiming to burst him down by the time we get across to the Major. Lovely. A bit earlier than expected. Now for sub-60 runs you can um, do whatever the hell you like really, but my preference is in this case to just kill the Major. No way, a 73. Into a 75, Jesus. You're not going to get another set anyway. A lot of the first capes of course you will... Um, Please die. Thank you. A lot of the first capes you'll aim to be doing a uh, sub-600 Zuck HP before you kill the major, but it doesn't really make a difference since the um, the time you kill him is fast enough that you won't spawn another set anyway. So, we're pretty AFK until Jad. I will be doing a Jad skip. Again, not super needed. I will be killing healers, of course. Just getting rid of them. Getting rid of them. Removing threat. Uh, Jad skip's pretty standard. Nice and easy to do for sub-60. Cool skill to learn. You can do a mage Jad skip if you're a really baller, but very much not necessary. Gonna brew up here. Complete to the max. Get the restore dose in. There we go. And we really are just waiting to tag, uh, to, to proc Jed now. Probably should have bought my Twisted Bow rather than my Spaghetti, but it is what it is. Tag Jed, pre-range, zoom out if you want to check his animations, or just listen to him. Prioritization for this fight now is Jad. Well, safe spots and Jad, of course. Look at Jad, pray against Jad. Everything Jad. After the mage attack is through, back to range pre, because you can't hear range pre. Well, you can hear it, but not until it's too late anyway. Gonna try and get one more hidden before healers. That's pretty big. 
Right, we're, good. we're right on the edge now, so we just have to wait for healer proc. We're going to do it in a nice uh, corner over here. There's the range shot. Going to wait for the shield for a few ticks and then send it. Get the chat hit, and let's go. If you don't get that first time, you can always delay it to the other side. Use my spec up. Checking the range hit. Gonna brew if I need to. Plenty of brew. There's the range hit. Gonna brew. Checking for the range hit. Staying with the shield. Back on Zerk. Now, priority is of course, stay with the shield. And get rid of the last healer. Well, I guess it's a bit of a combo of things at this point. Healer not quite dead, no problem. Use the brew as needed. Right, so you may have noticed I'm also keeping Jad in my sort of line of sight, as it were. Trying not to get dragged by the shield either. There we go. Nothing too crazy. 56-25. A bit faster than I wanted to go, but it was a fairly clean one overall, so there we go. Hopefully that uh, helped a bit. I know the commentary was sort of on and off, depending on how my brain was functioning during waves, but... For the most part, it was a relatively clean run, pretty standard jet skip. Um, things to note, yes, I used up a lot of my supplies, I was trying to pace it so I could just do that. Uh, you could always bring another brew if you wanted to, you could always blood barrage a bit more, you're still going to get a sub-60, I mean, we had four minutes spare nearly. Um, Gear-wise, this is pretty standard stuff, nothing too crazy about it. But yeah, that's it, hope you enjoyed. Um, I'm going to try and do a sub-50 with this, just a, a, a like maybe a 54, 53 with no chins and... No sand fuse and stuff to try and show that you can go really fast with this setup. Um, I'm not good enough to do a sub 50, so hopefully someone will supply some really good footage for that. And otherwise, I will. I was going to do a sub 75. I'm not sure I'll do that because it's just it's really hard to even get below to get above 60 currently. Because if I'm just not waiting, then why would you go above 60? But yeah, hope it was a good video. Hope you enjoyed. Learned something new. And of course, check out the Inferno Discord in the comments below. Take care, guys.